a little while ago, I made a video discussing the free desktop GitLab outage, and I had a couple of people asking me, who in the world is free desktop? What do they do? And why do they matter? And I'd like to add to that, why is free desktop probably outside of the corporate interests involved in Linux, the most important group to the Linux desktop? This is a group that includes some fairly low level things like Dbus, Empress, Font Config, all the way up to some fairly high level things like Wayland, WR Roots, Xorg, which you've probably heard of at least in some capacity, and maybe even heard of all of them, and you're probably starting to see that this is a fairly important group. Now, they also include things like XDG base directories, XDG utils, XDG userdirs, XDG screensaver, and you're probably starting to see a pattern. A lot of the projects under the free desktop banner have the acronym XDG. So why is it like that? Well, back when Free Desktop was first formed, it wasn't actually called Free Desktop. Instead, it was called the X Desktop Group. X Desktop Group, XDG. Now, the creators say that it's actually referred to as the Cross Desktop Group, but I don't think anybody has ever called it that outside of them. So XDG is what it is, and that's how I'm going to call it. Now, this was created by Havoc Pennington back in 2000. At the time, he was employed by Red Hat, but has since left the company to go and co-found a company named Tidelift. Now, many of these early free desktop tools with XDG in their name stemmed from a project known as Portland 1.0 otherwise known as the Portland Project, released in 2006. And as the name might suggest, this came from Portland, more specifically, the Portland State University, which is where Free Desktop, even today, is still being hosted out, so for their websites, their GitLab, and things like that. And the aim of this project was to ease the portability of Linux software between different Linux environments, so different desktop environments, different distros, different kernels, and things like that. So rather than, you know, GNOME having all of its own standards, and KD having all of its own standards, and Manjaro having all of its own standards, and so on and so forth, to the point where, to actually support things on Linux, you need to effectively support, like, a hundred different operating systems. They wanted to make sure that wasn't as bad as it otherwise would be. Now, it's absolutely not perfect today, but it never was going to be. Without some of these early tools, though, the problem would be much, much worse. But this idea of easing the portability of software and making sure that things just work nicely no matter how you're using Linux has sort of always been the goal of Free Desktop. With the main thing they've done over the years being defining standards aimed at interoperability, but they are not a standards body. They're not something like the Unicode Foundation or the French Academy, where they can define a standard from up on high, and then that is the way that it is. If you're not doing it like that, then you are doing it wrong. Instead, what Free Desktop is, is an open forum aimed at collaboration and discussion. And anyone out there is free to implement any of the specifications, or just choose not to if they don't want to do so. But the best way to have something actually get implemented is to offer a reference implementation so that people know how to actually use it. So for many of the free desktop specifications, those also exist. And many of the specs they've defined over the years have become the default and standard way to do stuff. So if you're using a desktop environment and you have a graphical application picker, all of those applications will have a .desktop entry associated with them. .desktop files are defined by free desktop. You also have things like the Dbus interface, file URIs, Empress, the way that trash works on Linux, X clipboard, and most notably, XDG based directories. So the reason why we put config files in .config, the reason why we put data files in .local slash share and things like that. And there are so many other specifications that might still be in draft stages or planning stages or just generally don't see that much use, but it's still really, really useful. Things like MIME settings being a very important example. MIME settings are the way that on a window manager, for example, you will define which applications open which files. And while providing specifications is a major part of what they do, it's not the only thing they do. Promoting and improving the general state of the Linux desktop also needs, you know, 
code being written. So to projects that are involved with them, they'll provide things like web hosting for their source code to make collaboration much, much easier. They'll also provide bug tracking. Now in the past, that used to be on a separate bugzilla, but now they're using GitLab and the bug tracking has been merged into that. They'll also provide things like mailing lists as well. Now there's a software list available on their website, and this has a lot of the projects that are involved with them, but not necessarily all of them, and some of them may have left and haven't been removed from this list. A more up-to-date list is going to the GitLab itself, where you'll see more things like Pipewire, Mesa, Network Manager, Pulse Audio, and the list goes on and on. And unlike the name might suggest, Free Desktop isn't trying to develop a Linux desktop itself. So there are other projects under this banner which seemingly are competing with each other, like WR Roots and Wayland are competing with Xorg, Pulse Audio is competing with Pipewire, but that's not really the point of Free Desktop. It's totally okay that many of these projects are trying to compete in the exact same space, because what they're doing is taking the Linux desktop in different directions and then seeing what works. So if something starts to pick up, you know, a bit of steam, the devs who are on that other project, if they feel like it, can easily shift over to another project and then start working on that. Now, Free Desktop is not here to say this is the way the Linux desktop should be and this is the way it is going to be. What they are here to do is offer a place for developers to come together and try to answer that question themselves. Let them try out different things. Try out Wayland, try out XOR, try out Pulse Audio, try out Pipewire, and see what sticks. And if one of those projects don't work out, maybe take some of the things that worked from that other project and then bring them into this new project. Now, as of roughly 2017 or so, every project under the free desktop banner requires the use of the Contributor Covenant Code of Conduct. At the time, this was a fairly controversial code of conduct that a lot of projects were starting to adopt, but since then, everybody's pretty much forgotten it existed. Now, while they do have this, none of the projects require the use of a CLA, a Contributor License Agreement. These are generally used to sign away your rights to any of the code. So normally when you contribute to a FOSS project, you are basically licensing your code to them under the specific terms of the license they are using. The CLA is used to sort of circumvent that and then give all the rights to the project. But some of the free desktop projects may require the use of a developer certificate of origin. This is basically a document saying that you are the one who wrote this code, you are aware that this code is going to be involved in this project, and this code didn't come from somewhere that, you know, would be violating our license. Let's say it's a GPL project and you're trying to bring in code that would break that license. Now, Xorg is an interesting inclusion because Xorg wasn't always under the free desktop banner. Xorg is managed by a group known as the Xorg Foundation, and in 2019, they joined, or maybe more aptly described, as formed a partnership with Free Desktop. So from Free Desktop, they get the hosting, the mailing list, the bug tracks, and things like that, and then what Free Desktop gets is they become a member of SPI. This is the way that the Xorg Foundation handles its funding, the software in the public interest. This is a non-profit corporation that handles the administrative work involved in running a free and open source project, especially one at the scale of something like Xorg. But they have much smaller projects under their banner as well, things like 0AD, FFmpeg. Debian is also under the banner, Arch Linux, Arch Linux 32-bit, Systemd, and a bunch of other projects. And this organization is a big part of how Free Desktop and the Xorg Foundation handle their donations. Now, when it comes to corporate backing of Free Desktop, Free Desktop itself does not take any corporate backing. Some of the projects under their banner might. For example, some of the Wayland related projects or Pipewire or Pulse Audio, all of these things might have some corporate backing, but the Free Desktop organization doesn't. However, they have received some backing in the form of paying for servers. So Google, Intel, and HP, all in the past, have done that. Now, the modern Linux desktop is incredibly disjointed with everybody sort of doing their own thing. And free desktop exists sort of as the glue that is trying to hold everything together. It's not doing a perfect job, but it's doing a job. 
And without a standards body, even sort of a de facto one like Free Desktop, everything would fall into further disarray. So let me know what you think of Free Desktop. Do you think they do an important job? Or could everything that's being done under their banner be done completely decentralized under all of these different projects? I would love to know. So if you like this video, everybody go like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, selling bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Bro Your Ops and Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.